Hi friends, welcome back to Backyard Homestead. Today we're going to can some yummy white chicken chili and hopefully get the beef pot pie uh, filling, not beef pot, no, the shepherd's pie. Well, you could use it for either shepherd's pie or beef pot pie filling. Hopefully we'll get that started but I don't know if I'll have time to can both because they got to go for 90 minutes. So we'll see. If not, we'll get it ready and then put it all in the fridge and can it tomorrow. Sorry, the microwave. It's an annoying microwave, too. It'll just keep going if you don't open the door. <laughs> Anyways, so I've got... Um, I did decide to use a rotisserie chicken and it actually uh, my husband bought it yesterday so it sat in the fridge overnight so it's really cold so we're gonna let it um just warm up a little bit to room temperature so that i can shred it apart because it's super super cold it's like feels like it's frozen because our garage fridge gets super cold so we're gonna let it sit for a minute and then i'm gonna shred it all up and then I'm going to put the carcass in another pot on the stove and start the broth. This requires 12 cups of chicken stock. And I don't want to open my already canned broth. And I mean, I'm going to make broth with this carcass anyways. So I might as well use what I make. So we'll let this sit for a minute so that it can warm up. Just a little, so I can pick it apart without my fingers freezing. Um, and then one, I'm going to go ahead and shred it apart. I don't think you guys need to see that. You know how to shred meat off the bone. <laughs> if you don't, it's not hard. Just get your fingers in there. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to put um, the carcass in a pot with water. And I'll show you how I do that and how I make my stock. And then, um, oh, yeah, and the beans. So I'm using Great Northern Beans. I showed you guys them yesterday, uh, I believe. Um, oh, I showed you guys them in the haul. If you didn't watch the Walmart and Thrive Life haul. Okay, so I soaked the beans overnight. Let's move you in closer. I soaked the beans overnight and then drained them. And then this morning I boiled them again. So the water's still warm. But they are pretty much, look at them, they're pretty, they're not completely soft. I just wanted to show you. But we're going to drain it one more time and rinse them through. And then um, they'll be ready to. Now, this recipe says it makes seven quarts. And it only calls for one pound. Hey, it's okay, Dory. It only calls for one pound of um, the beans. And um, this is two pounds. So I think I'll take half of these out and a little bit of the chicken if I have enough. Otherwise, I could take out more chicken out of the freezer. And um, I think we'll make... I hate when they have these. We'll make some for dinner also. See how they have those clear skins? I hate when beans have those. So... I think I will when I strain these. Like, I just kind of go like this to get them loose. That's why my hands are in here, if you're wondering. Why are your hands in the beans? See how many of them come off, those skins? I don't want those in the uh, chili when we can it. Um, so I think I'll just do this, and they'll all float to the top, and I'll get them out first. So that we don't have all that in our chili. See, they're already coming up. Look. Yeah, I don't want all those in there. And you know what? All beans do that. They all have a shell. Um, when you get them in the can, they're already... Um, already... Uh, they must have some kind of way to separate them. Because when you open a can of beans, 
it doesn't have all that. So, and you can, if you don't want to go through all this process of cooking the dry beans, you can use canned beans. You're going to need at least four. Sorry that the TV is loud in the background. My husband's got the TV on. <laughs> Anyways, you'll need about four, um, four cans of beans. So, all right, well, I'm going to let these sit. I'm going to go through and kind of get these skins off and then pick them out and rinse them. And we'll start them again. Really rinse them good and get these things out of here. And we'll pick the chicken apart and then we'll be back. So we'll see you in a few minutes. Okay. We're back. I got the chicken all shredded. I'm getting an apron because I don't want to get all dirty. Um, I got the chicken stock going. And I added the carcass. And I just need to add the... Some uh, veggies to season it. <laughs> Maybe a little salt and pepper. Now we're going to use this chicken stock. I washed my apron so it's all taken apart here. I'm trying to fix it. Anyways, we're going to use this chicken stock that we're making. So. We definitely want it to have a little bit of salt and seasoning. And I was thinking I would make chili with the leftover beans, but um, then I would have to take some chicken out and thaw it and uh, also cut up more veggies and use more chicken, which um, it says it needs like two pounds of chicken. And I just have this plate right here behind me. This is the whole rotisserie chicken, which it feels like about two pounds. So um, I would have to thaw out some chicken too. So I think what I will do instead is the other pound of beans, I think I'll just can them so that we have some just canned Great Northern beans to add to whatever, whatever we want to make any time. So, I think I'll do that. <laughs> but my um, my canner only holds seven quarts, so we'll do the chili first. All right, let me grab the veggies. So I keep, let's lower you guys a tiny bit. Um, so I have the beans here. I cleaned out all those little things that I could get out and drained them. I keep in my freezer onion, carrot, celery. So I'm going to add that to this to make the chicken stock. A lot of onions in this one. We'll just add a bunch. There we go. Let it boil and make us some uh, chicken stock. Okay, so I wrote the recipe down um, so that I don't have to go back and look at my phone. So we're going to need four cups of onions. <laughs> I'm just talking to no one. We're going to need four cups of onions, four cups of corn, a cup and a half of bell pepper, and what else? Oh, the and the green chilies, I just got the canned. And we'll just put a little bit. Actually, I'm going to just put the two jars in with the chili. I'm going to do one at first and see how it tastes. And some seasoning. So our chicken is already pretty much shredded. I'm going to get a cup of water first. And now where did I put my pill I need to take? Get a cup of water. I'm gonna add a little bit of this garlic and herb. 
to our broth. And it's already got plenty of onion, so don't need to add that. So let's put this away. Now, the recipe calls for minced garlic. I'm just gonna use this in the jar because I don't want to deal with onion or garlic. Let's bring you guys in closer so you can see what's going on. Shred the chicken a little smaller. These potatoes, I got to peel and chop for the um, the beef shepherd's pie filling. Just kind of shredding it up a little more. It's really moist. Super moist chicken. Now, if you don't want to use a rotisserie chicken, you can just buy a, um, you can just use chicken breast or thighs or whatever you want to use. I wanted the rotisserie chicken, so I had the bones to make chicken stock also. Okay, let's go ahead and put this in the pot with the beans. So how the recipe says to do this is you want to cook it all for 30 minutes. Or no, it didn't say 30 minutes. Put it all in the pot, bring it to a boil, and then um, and then add it to your jars. Let's go ahead and add the green chili salsa. I'm gonna give it a taste test to see because this looks like a lot of chilies actually. That might be enough. I'll set that there. We'll see. Let me bring you guys in closer. See, it's quite a bit of green chili. Okay. Put the lid on. Okay. Give the stock a stir. There's our chicken bones. Let's let it boil. We're gonna need 12 cups, so I think I may need to add a little more water to it. Let me first, though, get all this stuff out of here. So first we're gonna chop these bell peppers, and we need one and a half cups. I'm gonna go with two cups. And that'll probably be at least two bells. So let's see. Let me get a paper towel here. My hands are wet. My pup's watching me. Like, what is she doing now? She's always doing something. Got a bag here for the chicks. Got kale and carrots in there. So I am gonna put the bell pepper stuff in there too. So the chickens can have the bell pepper. Okay. Pepper is actually my dog's favorite too. Here you want a little bite there. They love bell peppers. Little weirdos. <laughs> Don't ask me why. Okay, so what we'll do is we will get just a one cup measure and I'll fill it. The chickens will 
have a field day with all that. That's for the chickens. Spoiled, they're very spoiled, our chickens. That's my husband's fault. He gets some worms and all kinds of stuff. Okay, let me grab one cup. I like to chop the, because we're gonna can it, we don't wanna chop it too small. Like about that is perfect. If you go too small, they might get mushy. dogs are like, drop some. Here. They really love bell peppers. They're little freakos. Here, Chloe. You guys are weird. <laughs> She's chewing it. Okay, let's see what we've got here. I think these two will probably be enough. says one and a half cups, but I'm going to go with like two cups. Yeah, that should be plenty. What, you guys are so silly. Okay, so there's one cup. How's your guys' day going so far? Honestly, it might be more than two cups because I'm just going to do the rest of this here. I don't want to waste it. And they are big chunks. There. Let's just put it all in there. It's a little over two cups. Just a tiny bit. Okay. There's that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these two away back in the fridge. Might as well throw that in there too. And I'm gonna need 12 cups of water. Watch out, baby. So I'm thinking I might need to add a little more water here. I don't know if that's 12 cups. It needs to hurry up and boil. Let's turn it up. Let me add more water. hope you guys are having a lovely day. I don't know why, but canning just makes me happy. Knowing that we have this put up on our shelf in case of an emergency. You just, you never know. never know, friends. Oh, piece of bell pepper. Okay, let's measure it. Oh, we're going to need some more onions. Okay, there's about a cup. There's one cup. And I keep my onions pretty big chunks, too, because, like I said, we don't want them to get mushy. And those were just two half pieces that were in the fridge. We're going to need three more cups of onions. So let's see how much these do get us. I'm 
gonna just throw them in there because I don't feel like getting the bag back out. It's gonna be a very oniony broth. It already had a lot of onion in it. We're gonna boil over here. Maybe I put too much water now. Okay. because I think we've got quite a bit there. Ah! What, Tiffy Pump? You can't eat onion. My heart really goes out for the victims of these hurricanes. It's so scary. Okay, there's two onion, two cups of onion. I think this amount here is gonna be plenty because that's already almost full, so it'll be fine. If you want to be precise, you can. Okay. It's basically about three and a half. Plenty, since we did an extra half of um, the bell pepper. Ooh, these onions are strong, guys. Let's get all this out of here. All right, now we're going to need four cups of corn. Watch out, dogs. It's causing me some, my eyes are burning. Okay, let me grab the corn. And I am just gonna use frozen corn. I think frozen is better than canned. Because uh, it's not mushy, like canned stuff can be mushy. But either one is fine. At least canned corn is a little crunchier than like canned peas. There's one, Whoa, two, three, and there's four. All right, there's all our ingredients. Let me know if you have any canning projects going, or if you would like to do this one, the white chicken chili. Now, when you open this and you make it, the, I always have this, so I'm so tall, you guys. I'm like 5'11", almost, 5'10 and a half or something. So, it's always cutting my face off. When you make this, if you open a jar, you can add a little bit of cream cheese, sour cream, heavy cream, uh, to thicken it also and to make it more like the creamy white chicken chili. And then add fresh cilantro, fresh green onions, maybe even if you want little tortilla chips on top, and it'll be really good. So I look forward to trying it. So we're really just waiting for the broth, and we want it to be a good tasting broth, so I'm gonna let it just simmer a tiny bit. And then we'll strain it. I might not even strain it. I might just get in here and get 12 cups of broth. In fact, I got my measuring cup right here waiting. This one holds four cups at a time. So, oh, you know what else we can do while we're waiting? We can add the seasonings. So, I'm gonna add some smoked paprika even though it's not on the list. 
black pepper. They want Mexican oregano, some cumin. I'm gonna add chili powder also, and that wasn't on the list, but I think that it's chili and needs chili powder. Okay. Oh, and Mexican oregano. So, let's get all those. And I'm almost out of the Mexican oregano. I need to buy like a giant one because we use a lot of this. Okay, let me get some measuring spoons. So we've got our great northern beans. Let's turn you guys towards me a little. <laughs> we've got our great northern beans. We've got our chicken, four cups of onions, four cups of corn, two cups of bell pepper. We're gonna need two teaspoons of salt. It says a non-iodized salt, but I'm not sure if Redmond's is iodized or not. I could use canning salt, but I'm just gonna use this because we're adding it right to the chili. So let's do that first. So let me bring it over this way so we can see. Okay. So let's do this. We'll bring it over on this side. So let's start with the salt. Two teaspoons of salt. said if you want to use canning salt you can go ahead I'm gonna go with a teaspoon of smoked paprika like I said it does not call for this one this is just me putting it in and then cumin it says a teaspoon which I don't think that's enough, but. <laughs> oh, I don't see any more cumin than that. Let's go with two. So it has lots of chili flavor. We got some chili powder. I'm going to do a tablespoon at least, maybe two. Now you don't have to spice it this heavy, okay? You can add what the directions say. Uh, let's see. A teaspoon of black pepper. Oh, here's this one. My husband grinds our own and we just put it in the shaker, but it's getting low. Oh, that's not a, that's a tablespoon. So we'll just go ahead and use this one. I think that's one and a half teaspoons. No, it's a teaspoon. Okay. All right, so black pepper. And the Mexican oregano, it says one tablespoon. And I basically have just a little bit left. I use this in our fajitas. Oh, when we make carne asada, Oh, look at that. A tiny bit left for some carne asada. Okay. Put it up here. Okay, let's see what else we've got here. Oh, and it also says a teaspoon of cayenne. I think that won't be too hot. Because it's a big pot there. You're not even going to taste it. So a teaspoon of cayenne. And to me, cayenne's pretty spicy, so just a teaspoon. All right, there it is, friends. That's everything we need in the chili, except for the broth. 
I don't know, 12 cups of water is going to fit in this pot. Let's hope it does. And then I need to go grab four more jars and clean them. Synthesis. This is about to boil over. I'm going to go ahead and um, try to scoop some out. Just because we're about to boil over, friends. So, let's go ahead and scoop. Yes, it has a little bit of, I'm not going to strain it. I mean, a tiny bit of chicken's not going to hurt anything. It'll give it delicious flavor. I may even have some broth left to can. It smells strong like onion. So it has a lot of onion in it. I could set up a little strainer over the measuring cup. All right, there we are. So there's four cups. And I don't know if 12 cups is going to fit. Like I said, we will see. some celery in there. There's four more. I think they'll fit in this pot, but barely. Ooh, it's going to be barely. I'm going to go ahead and bring it to a boil because we're not going to be able to fit much more in there. Let's turn this down a notch. It's boiling pretty hard now. Now this pot, I do not want to overflow it. It is pretty full. Let me try to get it all stirred. Let's bring you guys in. Let's get it stirred. Oh, I'm glad I added a little more seasoning. Oh, I didn't add the garlic yet. Okay, look at it, friends. It looks delicious. All these seasonings. I'm glad I added extra, even though it's making the liquid a little darker. Okay, I do not want to overflow this pot. Maybe we'll do half. There we go. Oh, look at that. We'll just leave a little bit of room to pour more. Smells good. I think this is gonna be a delicious meal to have on the shelf. Okay, I'm going to open, actually I'm gonna take this out. I think it'll be easier to stir with this one. Oh yeah, there we go. Get it all stirred. I'm gonna open the minced garlic and we'll add four tablespoons. <laughs> the camera's crooked. Ah, there went my spoon. Okay. It's okay. We'll get another one. Okay, four tablespoons will be about four cloves. There we go. I should probably taste the broth just to make sure it tastes good. Maybe I should. Oh my gosh, will you guys look at that? Oh 
Let's go to the taste. Got some spice. Mmm. One teaspoon of cayenne made it spicy. Wow. Okay. Let me go ahead and fill her up. All right, we're gonna carefully stir. I need to clean my stove now anyways, I got onion. It's a mess. Okay, we're just gonna let it come to a simmer and then turn it off. And then we'll use our ladle to ladle it into the jars. And I think, well that we can just keep letting go. Actually, I might add a little more. We can can more broth. To clean this mess up a little, get this cutting board out of here so we have room for our jars. And I'm going to put a towel down because I always make the biggest mess. And I mean the biggest mess. <laughs> I mean, I get it everywhere when I'm loading up the cans. Tiki pet. This little pet. Cute. Okay, I'm gonna go grab. Actually, let's put the towel first. So that our jars can sit right on it. Oh my goodness. Chill out, girl. Okay, we need two more jars. I'm gonna go grab two more jars. I keep the plastic on the bottom and I do save these. I save the bottoms just in case we ever wanna put them in and um, put them back in there. But we usually don't, so. All right, I'm gonna move these over here for a minute. They are heavy. Okay, I'm gonna get me a couple paper towels, just because I always make a mess. <laughs> All right, without spilling. Oh, watch out, Tiffy, it's hot. I'm burning the dog. We did it. <laughs> Almost burnt the dog, you guys. It dripped on her. Now she's licking it all off the floor. Okay. Okay, friends. We are ready to get them in the jars. Oh, I forgot the funnels. <laughs> and I'm going to have to... Actually, I'll do that in a minute, but I don't have the canner out yet. Okay, move dogs, move it. Okay, the hardest part with this already being mixed, because I'm used to like layering my stuff and then adding broth, is you wanna have equal amounts of solids and broth in each jar. So let's see how this goes. That's probably good. Like if we need more broth, we can add more. Okay. I think like three scoops seems to be good. We'll see. I mean, we want it to actually have stuff in it. OK. 
Okay. I should start over here. It's going to be a far carry here. Get some of these onions. like more already than the rest of them. Okay then. Ooh, this pan is a little hot. Looks like we have enough perfectly for seven. So the recipe is pretty spot on. <coughs> what are you guys on top of me for here? I'm just going to add a little broth. Whoopsies to that one. to that one. Maybe a teensy bit more to that one. Okay. Here's my debubbler. And you just want to, if you're new to canning, you just got to get it in the sides just to get all the bubbles out. Now this was a pretty easy recipe, not too bad. This one has a lot more beans and stuff, maybe a little too much. Hopefully it doesn't siphon. And we want it to have about an inch of headspace, so it should be perfect. all of those bubbles out. All right, let's get our vinegar. Now before I do the vinegar, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe them one time because there's a lot of broth that dripped everywhere. got white vinegar in here. We want to clean all the rims just to make sure we get all the grease off. So that's a good time to inspect the jars for any cracks or anything, but these all look good. I'm gonna unfold it and do one more wipe. Just to make sure. Well, I'm nice and clean so we get a good seal. Okay, I've got them in some pretty hot water. Now, according to USDA, 
You do not have to boil them anymore. I'm not gonna even um, finger tight them because it's really hot. And I don't know eh, how long it'll be before I put them in the canner. I gotta go get the canner and set it up. So we'll tighten them. So we're just gonna put the lids on loosely. And then right before we put them in the canner, because we don't want them to expand or anything, we will tighten just a tiny bit, not tight. Okay. All right. We are ready. We need to go get the, move that pot out of the way. Go get the canner and we will be back. So it did make seven quarts, four, five, six, seven. So that's good. I'm excited for this one because I canned a chili. Let me, let me raise it up so you're talking to me. I canned a chili with ground beef, but it was before, it was before I got the stovetop counter. So it was with my Carrie electric canner. And it does really good. It does really good for like pork, beef chunks, chicken. But for some reason the ground beef has like a, t like a burnt taste. And so when I did chili in the Carrie electric canner, it had a burnt, the chili has kind of a burnt taste to me. My husband liked it, but he likes everything burnt. So, um, I want to redo some regular chili in this um, stovetop canner. <laughs> the camera's all crooked. Sorry, guys. I want to read. I'm sweating a little. It's October, and what is today? The 9th? And it's still like 100 degrees here in California desert. I'm ready for fall. It's like we have two days of fall and then bam, it's winter. We don't really get a fall and it sucks. But anyways, so I wanna recan, not recan that chili, but there's only six of them I think anyways, but I wanna can some regular chili again with ground beef in the stovetop pressure canner and see if it tastes burnt and that one also. See if there's a difference in the flavor. So, all right, well, I'm gonna go get the canner, move this pot over, get the canner on the stove, and I really need to clean my stove now, it's dirty. Anyways, we'll get the canner on the stove, and then I'll show you how to get that started if you've never canned before with a stovetop canner. So we'll be right back. Hi, right, friends, I'm back. So I'm letting the water get hot. My tap water is like so hot, you can barely touch it, it's like, so because the jars, are pretty warm. My dog will not move. He's gonna get stepped on. Come on, buddy. You are gonna get stepped on, mister. You gotta move over. No, not over this way. Anyways, because the jars are still pretty warm, we need to put pretty warm water, so, um, like hot water, <laughs> so we don't break the jars. I was just watching uh, YouTube and saw some videos about what's going on in uh, North Carolina and Tennessee. They were showing Tennessee too. And wow, it is just devastated. And they are getting no help. They're getting help from people. They're, let me take this back. They're getting help from the citizens there, they're getting help from other Americans, but they are not getting help from FEMA at all. Only a few people are getting that $750 they're talking about, which is a joke. I mean, 
what's I gonna buy you a hotel for a night or two and maybe some food? I mean, what are they gonna do after that? Anyways, it's really sad. My heart goes out to them. My prayers go out to them. It's absolutely devastating. And it got me thinking, you know, even if you had preps, if your house washes away, it's not really going to help you. But that doesn't mean to stop preparing because there's always something going on. One disaster after another, right? So, the way I see it is you've got to be prepared. You've got to be. I've got my little thing in the bottom there. This pan's so heavy when you put water in it. If canning's not your thing, I have another video coming up of uh, homemade MREs that you can put in a Mylar bag or a jar. The Mylar bag I like better because you can put it in a backpack and stuff. Um, but now it's it's important. Even if you're buying an extra can of raviolis a week or beans or rice, just one extra little bit a week. In a couple weeks it will add up. But it is imperative that you get at least a two week supply of food and water, no matter where you live. Here in California, there's fires. There's all kinds of things. There, where we live, it's mostly fires. Um, but there's, you know, every state has something. Oh, here we go. So it's important to have at least two weeks at least I say three months honestly a year or more of food really you never know I mean look at how bad things are going I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer but also, it's smart to be prepared. You don't want your children, if you have children, come and you say they're hungry and you've got like one can of raviolis in the cupboard or something. At this point, At this point, it's past time to prepare. Honestly, if you haven't even gotten a week's worth of food, you need to do it ASAP and water. Clean out a milk jug and refill it with water. Anything you have to do, okay? You need water and you need food. And I say at least a two week supply but honestly, I'm really saying you need more like a year, at least six months. Things, uh, I'm trying to see, <laughs> figure out how I can say this without uh, YouTube <laughs> getting mad about it. Things have changed in the last few years a lot and it's time it's important now it's time to stock up even if it's a little bit like I said buy a 90 some cent pound rice every week if you can whatever beans dry beans anything okay just do it just do it 
it will help you in the long run. Even if it's something you don't eat, it's better than having nothing, okay? So, please, prepare. Like I said, start with a week and move it up. Move it up to three months, six months, a year. Like, it's taken me a long time to build my stockpile up, but we're constantly rotating and using it too, so. But we're also constantly adding to it also. <clears throat> okay, got the pressure canner. Let's bring you guys in over this way a little. Excuse my messy kitchen now. Okay. Let's see. My stove's a mess for making the chili and stuff. And the chicken stock. Alright, we're going to go ahead and start it up. Now remember we didn't tighten these rings at all, so we're just going to finger tight. And I did that because, like I said, they um, it was really hot. So, let's go ahead and add them. Add them in. Oh, whoopsies. I am excited for these. See what a mess I made on the towel? Oh my gosh, see how bad it would have been without it? Now we're not tightening the lids. Just finger tight, like they say. All right. Oh, almost put too much water there. Okay. Look at this towel. See, that's why I put a towel down. Look at it. Ugh. Yucky. Okay. Let's get over here more. Okay, if you've never pressure canned before, let's move you guys in. There's our stuff in there. Our chicken chili. And we've got it on high right now, pretty much. I've already checked the seal and everything. It's a little bit dusty. It's been in my pantry room. Everything in the desert gets dusty, friends. You cannot keep the dust off things. It's impossible. The wind blows one day and your stuff's dusty. Even if the windows are all closed. Okay, we're gonna close her up. We wanna make sure it's on venting, which is this little, let me bring you in closer. Watch out, buddy. This little puffy looking thing of steam. We're gonna let it go until it starts to boil, until it starts venting out of here. And it's, once it's coming really heavy, like a choo-choo train, then we'll time it for 10 minutes. Then after 10 minutes, we close it. And um, so these are different than the little pressure gauge things. Or not pressure gauge, but the other gauge that does your altitude. Uh, one is for a thousand foot or lower to 2000 or lower. So I'm at like 2500, so I turn mine to three. So, but right now we're on steaming. We're gonna let it come to a boil and then we'll set the timer once it's really going and we'll time it for the 10 minutes. All right, we will be back. Hi everyone. As you can see, it's venting like crazy. So let's go ahead and do the timer. It's actually been going for three minutes, so I'm just gonna put it at seven because I was um, doing a sheen haul of all the clothes I just got on there. And this is one of them. Now in the picture of this dress, the bra showing, and the picture of this had like a belt, but it's really more like a real loose moo moo kind of dress, but 
It's perfect for around the house. We'll be back in 10 minutes. Well, seven now. Okay, our timer went off. I'm gonna go ahead and move it to nine. Number three. Now it'll start to build up pressure really fast. Um, so we want to keep it between the two and three is fine because we're at 2,500. Um, but you don't want it to go above the three really. Usually if I keep it on about medium, a tiny bit higher than medium, it will stay right there the whole time. So, I'm gonna give it a minute to come up to pressure, then we'll set the timer for the 90 minutes, and we'll be right back. Actually, I think I'll just be back in the 90 minutes. Uh, what, what I'm letting it do is let the, temp the pressure rise, and I'll bring you in to show you. See, once it gets to about here, We'll start the 90 minute timer. Tiffy, Tiffy pup. All right. Now remember, don't ever try to open it. Once it is closed up, it's starting to build up pressure. That's when, <laughs> that's when tragic things happen. But this actually won't open, it has a lock. So, all right. It's already at number one. So once it comes up, then I'll start the timer for 90 minutes and I'll be back in 90 minutes. Thank you guys for joining me with this. Can't wait to see what it looks like when it's done. All right, friends, it's been the 90 minutes. It's actually been way longer, so it's all cooled down. Um, it's completely um, cool, so. Let's check it out. So the jars are cool now too, so I don't need to um, use the jar lifters. Oh, it's looking good. There's our chicken chili. Looks like all of them have sealed already. Usually I let them sit on the counter overnight after I take them out. But these are already totally cooled down. So we'll go ahead and uh, wash them in a few. Then I take the rings off and wash them. It looks like they all canned good. So how I would serve these, Let's show you guys. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't realize it was up high. How I would serve these is open a jar and add some cream cheese and sour cream so it thickens and it makes it more like the white chili. And um, like one jar would be for me and my husband. If you really wanted to stretch it, you could make like rice or something to add to it. I think that would help stretch it. Anyways, here it is, our white chicken chili. And uh, it looks pretty good. We'll open a jar someday and try it. <laughs> All right, so our next project will be the beef shepherd's pie filling, which is what the potatoes are for. Anyways, let me get this cleaned up, wash those, and our next video will have the um, the beef shepherd's pie filling. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you so much. Like and subscribe and let me know what else you would like to see me can or make. Um, as far as, uh, you know, I can pretty much cook anything, I think. <laughs> um or if you would like a, spe a special recipe made, let me know. Thank you. Have a great night.